What's up, everybody? Nick Blazer back here with the Luke Gro Luke Gro Luke Rocky Luke Rocky Grand Prix 2023, <laughs> our first annual tournament in Greece, and we've got the undefeated finals coming up between Nodar Gagua and Ralph Jonas. Should be a good one. Uh, Nodar Gagua, tough opponent out at all the tournaments, and used to seeing him uh, play from Georgia. Uh, pretty strong stuff, you know, like classic player. And, and Ralph Jonas, just one of the best in the world, German player uh, on that national team and everything like that. So uh, we're going to see really strong stuff from him and have already on stream so far. Um, should be a really exciting matchup. Yeah, they have made it all the way through. Ralph has had to win uh, six rounds to get here. And uh, Nodar on the side of the bracket with a uh, bye. So he's uh, had to win five here, a little bit easier path, I would say. Uh, but you can go look at those brackets. I can... Uh, show you that really quickly too, uh, just like a quick view at it. 
But yeah, we can see Ralph's pass through a bunch of pretty like decent opponents here, you know, on the Miller side. But I mean, Nodar's had to knock off a lot of big names over here too. I was looking at Akiko Yazawa in the first round, Jorgen Grandstadt, Elaine Babylon, and then Gili Davidovich, who we saw in the first round take out Michi. Um, so yeah, that's how we've gotten here all the way to our final of the undefeated bracket. Uh, if we come back over here, uh, I think the players are going to get started pretty soon here. But the, the winner of this match is going to immediately, I mean, they won't get a uh, loss anymore. They're just going to go directly to the finals where we play a uh, true finals and they will win 5% of the prize pool, which I believe is around 32,000 euros right now. So uh big chunk up for grabs uh, right now in this match. And then they'll be playing for, for that 40% first prize, which is quite a bit too. Um, and, and the loser of this is going to go to the quarterfinals of the second chance bracket straight over there. So the loser of this match can still win three matches on that side to make their way back to the finals for a rematch. Um, but of course, the shorter path and a lot more rest for the person who wins this. The finals aren't till tomorrow morning, uh, even later than what we're starting right now. I think this is starting around uh, 1.30 local time, and I think the finals are scheduled for 2.30 local time tomorrow. So they'll have like close to 24 hours off to get ready for the match. So I, I feel like that's a pretty big advantage for the undefeated uh, champion as well in that way. Uh, totally makes up for that extra life that they lose or whatever. Um, nope, we have someone uh, walking into the camera over here. Cool, cool. <laughs> Arda's giving him some direction there. I think that's his hand on the right side of the screen. Uh, Mate down on the camera there too. Nodar playing on the bottom side of the screen on the right and Ralph on the left. And we'll see if we can tell. They haven't put the checkers out yet either. So I want to make sure I've got my, my board right for that. But yeah, we're going to get started any moment here. Looks like they've got a baffle box to play with too. Cool. Looking like white checkers on bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that around. All right. And playing to the left as well. But yeah, we're going to switch over to that boardroom. See Arda pointing things out, I guess, just agreeing on rules and setup and things like that. Um, yeah, we're going to get going any moment here. We'll still have the players on camera on the commentary screen, of course, too. 15-point match in the undefeated finals. The grand finals will be 17. Once they go over to the loser side of the bracket, or the second chance, <laughs> the loser side. Uh, I think the quarterfinals is still nine points, but the semis, we'll be back later today with the semifinals and the finals of the second chance side as well. Those will be 11-point matches. A little bit shorter to keep it moving because there's a lot more matches over on that side of the bracket. Ah, the doubling cube because of the baffle box has to sit in the center of the board. Okay. Got it. Or it can sit next to the baffle. Hide on over there. Okay. Looks like the player's about ready to start. Handshake to get the match underway. Oh, getting some photographs here too. Okay, okay. I like it. Feels good to make it this far into the into the tournament. Like I said, five wins for Nodar, six for Ralph. Takes a lot of luck, no matter how good you are at this game, to to dodge that many bullets. So <laughs> I'm sure they're both feeling lucky to be in the seat here and this player uh, to feel the 87 entrance that that made it through here. And they're the last two undefeated players. 3-2 is going to split to open. Double aces tends to point on head when they split up to the 21 like that. If we had an extra spare on the 6, we could consider hitting loose and making the 5. 5-4 five, is going to make the 20. The Kirin point, Michi calls it, past that made 4 point. 
Great piece of structure for for Ralph. Five three. Uh, maybe it needs to split here, but uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's gonna just make the board point and put pressure on that anchor to not be able to leave. Usually, once our opponent has an anchor, though, we need an anchor of our own. Uh, two one. Not much to do with the ace, so instead of cleaning up, he's gonna go for that. Okay. Five six gets to run one. I'm not sure I actually would have found this slot here. Uh, just like playing in the outfield or lifting, all seem totally reasonable. It's a solidified position. 4-3 gets to cover and play a checker down. Okay, Ralph's position starting to improve as well. If he can get a maybe 10 pip race lead and and better board than, than his opponent, he's going to have interesting cubes against that single checker back. So his priming and attacking game plan is still open, given that his opponent has just the one back and not an anchor. So Ralph has that going for him, and Nodar, all he has is to escape and race against that anchor. Uh, so with this prime and the inability to escape past it, uh, we could have a cube threatening a five prime in a couple different ways here. Feels a little thin down in the race here, but um, yeah, look at this. We're right on the borderline. Okay, he's going to wait. Five, four. So Nodar's step up with the ace to the 23 prevents Ralph from switching to the four or nine to four, eight to four. So I think, yeah, probably just uh, letting go of the 11 for builders makes a lot of sense. I don't think we want to run off the anchor or anything. I don't think we want to turn our beautiful priming structure into an attack and point on head. Leaves a lot of returns. That would be my instinct. Uh, there's a better building way. Interesting. Yeah, I, I would not have I'm just cleared the 11 like this too. I'm not sure why 9 to... I guess, oh, no shots. No reason to leave any shots in the outfield there is the idea. Okay. Ace three, I think it wants to creep up once again to uh, see the light, but then the three has to leave a shot, so he's just going to play behind. And actually better to drop a block down just to be able to see there. Wow, that's that's a tricky one to find too. Four one is just going to stack up the five. Okay, ready to build next time. Misses a cube again there with a decent size racing lead now. Four one. Once again, I think it really wants to be at the edge, so I think we need to find something like 8-4 to four along with the step up, but but now we don't want to step into all this material. That's really strange. I don't know what's changed here where he was happy to leave a shot last time, and now now he can't afford to do it. I would have went with Nodar's play there too. All right, and 6-1's a whiff. Misses a big cube here with the threat of attacking too, uh, but all he can do is just play behind with the racing lead. Pretty unfortunate there. Yeah, lots of gammons in play here with uh, 13 checkers in the zone. When he points on head, that's going to work a lot of the time. Uh, yeah, maybe no need to get closer into more shots there. I don't mind staying. All right, so Nodar has found freedom here. And Ralph just waiting for his opportunity to run off the anchor with a set or hit a shot, something like this, still with the racing lead. Five one can't get the checker on the sixteen to safety. It's still doing good containment work back there, so not a big deal. Blot and board two, so on a six five he still gets a shot. And four two is gonna progress the structure forward for Ralph. Six one sure makes another landing point and blocking point. And we're getting close to the moment where something's got to give. Someone's got to leave something. 5-2 can make another blocking point. Oh, that's nice. It unblocks double fours, uh, but it keeps double sixes from running. I think long-term we prefer to have that in the way, yeah. Uh, I mean, really, it's like surprisingly valuable to have the mid to contain that anchor, though. So got to be careful giving it up too quickly. 5-3 uh, and 4-4 four, four are the only shots. Okay. The 6-2 doesn't work now. Three covers and two in, okay. And Ralph will be forced off with some sixes next roll. And if he's ahead in the race, then I think he wants to do this. It's only six pips though, so I'm inclined to keep the blocking structure instead. Except all I can do is play behind, so I'm not really sure. Maybe clearing the 11 is just going to be... Otherwise, it's 13 to 1, I think, which doesn't look great either. But I, I think I would keep the blocking structure for one more roll. Well, that's an interesting play. I actually like this 13, 7, 4 to 1. If I had even thought of it, maybe I would play that. Uh, 
All right, but he's just going to make this simple clearing and racing play. And it's going to let Ralph out with the 5-4 to uh, not a winning race yet, though. But, I mean, it's pretty even. Definitely not an option he has the other way, though. It has to bury checkers so he can kind of see the value of keeping the contact after that play. 5-4 can come into the 6-point. Or take two crossovers. Okay. Interesting. Not sure why that one's better. Five off and two, or five in and two fills a gap. And both of them just fighting to see who can take some sort of racing lead first. Pretty even with a small advantage to Ralph, but then he's going to roll these double aces. And we'll be even again. Double fives. There we go. Most of the time, this should be enough to get a cube in. Two off for Ralph is pretty good. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be a six pip difference. Seems like plenty to send it. So under 62, the trice formula wants to subtract five from the pip count, which is 41. And then uh, divide by seven. Okay. But we're going to find a pass. Whatever. <laughs> Nine pips too much. We got to do some accounting for wastage there, and maybe Nodar's is a little worse with the open five and all these things, but um, still enough to get a pass out of Ralph. Should be the instinct there, too. 14 away, 15 away. Nodar draws first blood. All right, 2-1 is going to slot in the opening. Standard stuff. 5-1, I think, can split in response to the slot. Yep. Four six gets the cover and probably split itself, even into these big stacks. We have the better board, so now's the time. 4-2 gets to make a point. Ralph looking to establish the curing point. Uh... Nice second second best, maybe. Making the bar point in a four prime. Puts a lot of pressure on Nodar's position. Doesn't look like there's a lot to do other than the blitzing play here. And so it's tougher for this to succeed when you're stuck behind a, a four prime. Oh, it's even tougher. Now Nodar's got, or sorry, uh, Ralph's got a decision here between just anchoring up with this four point board or hitting... Uh, my instinct would be anchoring up and not letting that four-point board do any work here. But, okay, he's going to go for the hit instead. Close stuff. I'm surprised how, how tight those run. Sending a third checker behind the prime is a good way to keep the blitz off, too, I suppose. But Nodar enters really well. Gets the anchor up at the edge. Oh, he wants to look at the switch instead. I think I would expect that making the anchor was a little more strong. But this buys a little bit of time. Maybe this is fine. Okay, nice find by him. Four in. Six comes around the bend. 5-1. We knew it was a good roll, but it was even better than I saw. <laughs> Has to hop one out for mobility. The one links up on the 22. I think I like that play. Otherwise, we're coming off the mid and volunteering anyway. And what does Ralph have now? Small racing lead. Extra checkers back. Way better structure. Threatening to send that back and extend to 5 prime. I mean, it all looks positionally very strong to me. When he misses, he's still got a big advantage. Uh... Maybe close enough race and strong enough board still to play it. But, okay, big pass here. Yeah, positionally just too overrun. And Nodar wants to play it, though. Perhaps underestimating the the gammons or how, like, brittle the position is. 5-1 uh, doesn't do a whole lot for Elf. But even when missed, we can see, like, Nodar is probably going to play around to the outfield, leave a shot out there or something like this. Um, it's just tough to really, like, button this position up. So he gets to make an anchor, but has to introduce another blot in the outfield. And Ralph shooting at fours and fives. And this four prime just likely to persist. Two one turns into a five prime now. And so I'd say this is improved for Nodar, but this is still potentially a passable position too. Uh, given that he's got the 22 behind the five prime, hard to escape all these things. Yeah, the four covering and six around seems pretty strong. Uh, does he want the six out? Wow, I would not have thought about that, but I guess the threat is more priming and the race is close. Probably. 
Probably we should make the 16. Yeah, okay. So he's just going to come around. And so when we stay back there, like with this close of a race, we're just going to crash a little too often. And the only thing we have to safely escape is double sixes. Our opponent was not ready to switch to an attack. So it was just a very nice time to pop out there. Two down. Yeah, okay. Yep. Two one is just going to play down. Only pays the six one, which leaves shots and board anyway. Four three is likely going to slot another point. Yep. Hmm. What should that have done instead, I wonder? Oh, and two down from the mid. Yeah. They're a little front loaded the way we have it. Okay. Six one can probably afford to leave another fly shot. Why not just play it off the mid? I guess maybe this distribution uh, into the six. Yeah, I don't know why we want to leave a checker on the seven, but it looks spread out in case he runs and stuff. I don't really know. Wow, he doesn't want to give up the mid. He's going to play in. Okay, one checker dead. Yeah, I suppose he's got to do that. Five behind and four in. I like it. And double sixes. Okay, there's the turnaround. Nodar's patience pays off. He's just a clear favorite in the race now and probably has a recube coming after this sequence. I'm not sure. I mean, like, Ralph has to roll really big to stay in this game. Five one. That's not going to be enough. We should be double and pass again. I don't think wastage can keep him alive here. Wow, this is a take somehow. How does? I guess Ralph's distribution is much better. The open five and the spare and the three is probably like at least two pips of wastage. Maybe we give it an extra one for the second check around there too. But yeah, because eighty two to ninety three wouldn't be enough wastage. I'm surprised how much this wastes. This uh, does not look like so our typical racing formula is like I was saying with the trice one. We would take a point of last take of nine here. Um, and we're four pips past that, which looks like a monster pass. Yeah, Ralph just could instantly let this one go. Looks like a dead drop to me too. I'm not sure how, how the wastage pays off that much. That's, very, that's a tricky one. Maybe Michi and his Kleinman count can uh, figure that one out. Twelve away, fifteen away. Nice start for Nodar. Six one gets to start with a point for Ralph. No big score adjustments here quite yet. Five three is going to make a point in board. Three point deficit is not a huge deal in this long of a match, so we're still going to just uh, tend to play like normal playing unless we get into like big cube territory or something like that. 6-5 tends to like to slap the better point, the bar point, and just play two down like this. Nice find by Nodar. 6-3 gets to hit for Ralph and probably continue to get off the sixes from the bar. Double fours is going to fan. Okay. Pretty clear advantage for Ralph. Seems like a fine action cube, and the question is probably more on the take pass side for Nodar. But with only nine in the zone and an anchor still, Wow, yeah, it already is in past territory. Okay, maybe there's a little bit of adjustment there. We'll take a look at that one in a second. My assumption this early in the game, though, with like only a two-point board and all these things, is that it's almost always going to be a take. There's just so much game left. 5-3 uh, is going to enter, so I definitely don't felt the take on that one. Last one was a bigger deal, but this one's like really close. Four two doesn't want to introduce any extra blots with the racing lead and mostly escaped. And six one gets to link up with the seventeen, make a sort of advanced anchor in the outfield there. Only problem is that it's only sevens to get to it from the back, so he needs to step up and link up there. Five three could point on the ace. Why would it do that though? Five three can also just escape. Looks very stiff to have that five stack out there. Yeah. Six four. Just playing quiet and waiting for the right opportunity to hop out to that 17 and getting our board in order otherwise. This time it might be forced to point on the ace. Uh, the only play B would be to like make the 10. Everything else, which is going to leave a shot too. I think we're just making the ace. Well, I'm surprised how close that is too to just try to get freedom now. I guess there's blots in board. This unstacks the midpoints. Gets us closer to home. There's a lot of good things it does. 
provides a landing point for clearing the mid later. Where, I mean, of course, making the ace looks very strippy and strange. Like, our eight checkers in the zone are committed to weird and uncoordinated points after this. We really hate having the ace and the seven together, not really doing work at the same time. I guess we can see maybe stylistically Ralph is just not a uh, make the ace point player as well. Passed it up earlier. But the non-committal play, I mean, he does seem to play kind of like quiet and simple through games or something like that too. And I feel like it's more non-committal in a way to make the ace here rather than leaving the shot now and kind of going for it. A lot of volatility shows up when you break the 15 point here. Maybe there's more than I'm estimating, though, too, after we don't, since our position's pretty stripped and we're just hoping to land a checker from the midpoint on a 6, 7, or 9 away. Or roll sets. I believe there are a lot of numbers that don't do one of those things. <laughs> I'm spending a lot of bank time on this one, though. It's always frustrating to look over afterward to see, like, how hard you thought about it and that they were tied and it didn't matter, really. <laughs> Wow, he's going to find the best of it, though. Nice stuff, Ralph. Ace four fans one time. And now at least if he can't land where he wants to, he's got an opportunity to uh, do something bold where his opponent's on the bar, leaving a little bit less risk. Make the nine point. That looks strong. Three in. Where does the ace go? I guess it just starts another board point that we want. Oh, well, wants to switch. Okay. Doesn't want too much to have to clean up in case he gets a shot soon is the idea there, I do believe. Uh, switching to buy time could be an idea, but we can just make the five point. Uh, we could switch and clean up, though, is a thing, too. But maybe just maybe just seven to five twice looks like a little bit too good to pass up. I don't know. Okay. So we're going to switch here. The simple blitzy play wins out. I guess we don't need the pure structure. Uh, four in and six slots a point behind. Okay. Two six can clear the nine point safely if it wants to. If he plays this six, then he doesn't have any safe deuces. But two blots and board, I guess he decides that now's the time. Yeah, okay. Curious about those aces too. Four one gets to cover the deuce, and the ace probably starts another point. And that's what I want to do still, but like this isn't what he's been tending toward. Doesn't want so much on the board to clean up. So the seven to six not too surprising to see. Fours. Uh, I think it's making the five point, but he seems to no. Maybe we're just clearing for the rear. He seems to really like understand the value of this nine point against the seventeen point. And that, that's like the key to bringing home against this holding game. And yeah, wisely navigating this one and not being tempted by like the, the these default rules of just like always make the five. Sees that the priority here is just to clear from the back and win the race. That's a very nice play, Ralph. Five, two. Two finally gets the cover. Five can come down. Six four is gonna stack up the three, okay. And so he's still got some trouble getting through that that goalkeeper on the twenty one. Doesn't rate to clear that contact safely exactly. I guess he's got a lot of rolls to do it. Five one. So I don't think he wants to the thing about like the pick and pass here is that, yes, it could clear the contact forward to the 20, but it also could cause the contact to come all the way back to the 23 and give him more problems. So I think it's better to just close the deuce point and be ready for pick and passes later or something like that. Plus, we're way ahead in the race, so we don't really need to like take a roll away. Just want our opponent out of the way right now. Six, 
sixes is fast, still 13 down, so doing fine. Um, maybe he doesn't want to give up the contact if he could avoid it, but what else does he have? He could just stack up the five and leave the single blot back there. It doesn't look too scary to me. Maybe I'd go for that, just 17 to five twice. I think we can play a single checker air, like a anchor here because we have so much better of a board and our opponent has a dead checker behind. The distribution is just not threatening to close us out and win a gammon or anything like that. But uh looks like Nodar is considering just going for the pure racing play for fear of staying back there and losing out on the pips he's gained with his double sixes. Oh, nice find, though. Okay. Eventually goes for the contact play. Double twos is one of the few rolls that can punish this stay back with one. Yep, I think it's once to switch six to four for sure. I'm surprised he's pausing to think about this. What else would he do? Why not freeze him and maybe win a gammon? There we go. Three one fans. Five four gets to bring two checkers closer to bear off. And what is this? Maybe like 10% gammons at best. Probably underneath it though with the open six point. We're in and I guess we can, oh yeah, we're going to get off the sixes and fives. So continuing on to the four point makes sense. Wow, and six three is going to hit from the roof. Those are hot dice. Total turnaround in this game. Uh, oh my gosh, and I was going to hit with the one six from the bar again. Okay, four numbers to keep this idea going. Oh, five, sixes work too. 6-3, okay. That's good contact. I think, yeah, just this 9-6, uh, to six, and if he can dodge an ace, then he's going to have really good containment on that checker. 4-2. I think this wants to step 18-16 to 16 and stay out of direct range and play behind. And now there's... Wow, they're both just scrapping to see who can get home first, but, but Nodar with a ton of winning chances in this after being on the ropes for maybe losing a gammon. Really unfortunate for Ralph here. 6-4... Is a long 10 to hit, and Ralph can't enter. I think this is double pass now, and he's going to take the game again. Sneaks another one out of there. Uh, almost technically too good, but almost no gammons in this place, so I think it's fine to claim it. Wow. And Nodar just taking cubes from Ralph, turning them around, and, and stealing points away. 10 away, 15 away. Three one to open. Our favorite starting roll. Ralph gonna reply with one of his own. Four three, I think should like to split here. But he's gonna go for two down. Interesting, okay. They're kinda small. But yeah, I mean we're threatening to be primed and have a prime of our own, plus we're ahead in the race, so I think uh that would be why I would prefer splitting there. Gets the point in on head here. After Ralph splits. 5-3 is going to fan. And now Nodar with uh, a clear advantage. But with the made 5 point not having done anything with his 24 point, I don't think it's enough. But 10 in the zone also is a lot of blitz threat. So maybe at normal scores this, this would be borderline. But now this 5 point deficit I think I think is enough to start like slowing down a little bit in this 15 point match. So I would use that to choose not to send it here. Um, eighteen nine. So we are actually pretty close for money, yeah, but but significantly shy at this kind of score. Going to get it in on the volatility anyway. Ralph going to take. We end up with a four point board. Ralph going to reestablish a twenty four point for some life, but things are looking good after that sequence for Nodar. I think he's happy to have cubed. Five two can make the eight point, but uh, running out of time to do something with our back checkers. Really need to split soon, and almost worth passing up the eight point to do it there. Uh, why not? I think I would like to play 13 to 11 here to contain and build and things like that, but Ralph doesn't want to leave any fly shots. Okay, and he's right. Surprising to me. 3-1 is going to probably just step... Well, I guess we could play 9 to 8 as well, yeah. So we're going to split for sure. Or we could play 9 to 6, yeah. Why not play the safer split? I like that. Oh, look at this. The, the major is better. Okay. Seems like less provocative here, but we also have less space to escape, so I don't know. A little bit in both directions. 6-3 is just going to try to run and find some freedom with our good structure. 
But uh, Ralph developing nicely and could get into uh, recube scenarios in this game for sure. Nodar looking for some sort of cleanup or fives out. Four around the bend. Okay, I'm going to keep a builder for the bar point there. 6-5 gets to escape a checker, I guess. Even though we're down in the race, I don't see anything else to do with it. We're not like turning into attack against a better board. 5-1, what can this do? It wants to hop out to the bar. A little bit risky right now, though, to stay there. Um, so I guess he's thinking about a loose hit, maybe, too. But I'm probably just coming in 9-4, to 6-5, to five or something like this, and just deferring for a roll. I don't see a big call for tempo here. Wow, it's really important uh, to hop out there. So he does the, the hit and step up to buy him some time. Gets a fan out of Ralph. That position was really confusing to me. Uh, can't cover, but he can establish a seven point in case his opponent enters on the ace, then he's primed. Uh, what does this need to do? The four could come down, but then it leaves a lot of sixes from the bar. So maybe just a little bit of uh, prudence here with eight to four is called for. Close stuff, though. Five, six fans. And now what do we have? Ralph is not at the edge, but he's threatening a lot of gammons when it works. Um, so maybe he's not even winning yet, um, but he does miss a cube here. Yeah, we got to think about recubes at this kind of score line for sure. Two, four enters. Um, sizable one in a 50-50 game. Yeah, but a lot of gammons. That's interesting stuff. Uh, so he must certainly be passing one here. 6-5. I think we want to keep going for the attack to buy us time. Um, and I would think the 13-8 with it just to bring a checker in, but maybe we could do something like... I guess we want that structure in case he ends up entering on the deuce is my idea. So I think I want the 8 point here. But, okay, 9-4 to four for another cover instead. And still just like almost a dead even game here with a ton of gammons in, in his favor. Yeah, I would probably end up with Ralph's play there too. They're, they're close though. Aces, oh, what a shot from the bar. Okay, gets to split, gets to hit, gets to hit again in the outfield. Uh, Ralph feeling lucky to not have gotten that recube in here, I guess. Um, but he actually had a pass there. I mean, I don't think there's any way Nodar is letting that go from some of the other cubes he's taken. I, I'm not sure. 3-1 can make the 6 prime. It's like Ralph just has this sense that like now's not the time to get aggressive cubes and turn it around. Just got to wait for these dice to pass or something. Four or four fans again. Ralph did get an anchor at least and not closed out here. So that's something. But 6-2 going to send another checker back. Maybe maybe the new plan is to make uh, ace-deuce back game here with no timing. You just have to make it at the perfect time and then it'll be okay. Five gets to hop out for mobility. Exactly what Nodar was looking for. Ace four is going to enter and start the deuce. Yeah, and this is uh, not looking good. It's looking like it's going to get crunchy fast for Ralph. It'll be hard to hang on to his front structure by the time he gets a shot here. Severely undertimed. And Nodar wants to, with his six prime, keep a little extra contact. Interesting. Okay. Forces his opponent to deal with some bad aces there, maybe. I think maybe there's still some counter priming threat there that's not exactly worth it, but I don't know. Okay. And Ralph trying to figure out how he can crash gracefully now. Five, and then I think we want to play six to four to get to killing our fives as quickly as possible. Double fours. Not a bad development for Ralph. Hoping that Nodar can just uh, speed along. And leave his shot before everything's destroyed. I don't think the ace wants to hit at all. I think you should just play six to five and wait. There's no path forward after you hit and just more blots involved, of course, right? Um, so the question is really which ace, but I think, yeah, killing five still feels like the idea here. I am surprised it somehow wins more. I guess the idea is that our opponent could hit and enter on the ace and have to crack with it or something. Ace five or something, and then we're at the edge, and maybe we have some winning chances. So it is the DMP play. I'm really surprised. Ralph's got a good sense for this, though. I would never even think about that.
profile, and he is going to go for the hit. Finds the play that wins a little bit more. It's impressive stuff. Maybe he can also establish the 23 and play some double anchor game. There's another idea from here. 6-2 is the opposite of what Ralph was hoping for. <laughs> Great shot for Nodar. Past the structure, takes him off that extra point, sends another checker back, and just a disaster for Ralph here. This whole match so far, disaster after disaster. All right, 4-2. Now five checkers back. Some backgammons available and things like that here too. It's looking like... A long road for Ralph, but there are some ace point games to be salvaged in one from here too. His board isn't too crashed. No completely dead checkers yet. 6-2, I think. Yeah, there we go. And so there could be turnarounds if uh, leaves a shot and hits it early. He does have that four-point board ready. Ralph just has to make his way around and uh, reestablish the six point. Deuce is playing four to two. I think. Yeah, it's an ace to cover either way. Why Why would it be better? I guess we're going to get more checkers in the area to cover it sooner if we switch three to deuce. It must be like really small stuff though. But I love how we just get like stuck on puzzles like this, you know. He has a sense that he can figure out which one's like slightly better, so he's going to take the time to do it. And we're well under 10%. Super unlikely it matters at all. <laughs> you gotta grind out everything you can figure out in backgammon though oh he's gonna go for this idea of like preserving a four point board instead too okay you can see that coming check her off 4-1 I think the idea kind of works there yeah are we peeling or clearing I guess with his opponent's weak board, he wants to just take off. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. 6-2, beautiful shot for Ralph. Anything that hops past the structure is huge here. 6-1 clears safely for Nodar. No shots yet. 5-6 is another two out. I think it has to be. We got to save backgammons. We got to get checkers in the mix. Yeah, we want to come around and close the 5 and the 6, but we don't have enough material to do it yet anyway. So I think priority number one is not losing a backgammon. And the rest will come. Interesting. Decides to play around instead. Close stuff, but 5-4 leaves a shot already. Okay. And 6-2 can't hit it. Now he's coming out with another. Double sixes is going to repeat the shot, but a ton of checkers off now. Even when hit, he has nine off and not facing very many recubes. Six five needs to run out one more to make sure it doesn't lose the the backgammon. And running out of chances here, Ralph is. The five, I guess I would just slot the six, but maybe making the eleven or coming to the thirteen for containment are all fine ideas too. I don't know. Four one. All right. Gonna need a deuce to leave a shot next time. Ralph needs that out of Nodar. I don't think he wants to run here because he can still get that shot and do something about it, save gammons, things like this. Probably, yeah, getting to the 13 looks kind of nice to me. Oh, just two up, two. Okay. Slotting, all these things the same. <laughs> Three one. All right, so when we're even, even when we have the perfect board, we tend to run to just avoid losing a backgammon. So Ralph going to give it up. Um, I'm not sure there's any way to save a gammon here, but he's going to try. Sixes, ace, sixes, yeah. There we go. Another four points on the board for Nodar, taking him to six away, 15 away, with nothing on the board for Ralph.
All Nodar so far. And of course, we're going to have some more significant cube adjustments now with this big nine point lead. We'll see how they handle it, though. I think Nodar was still happy to get in a reasonably early cube last game with a big match lead. And definitely not afraid of taking in general. 5 3 going to hit off the high point instead of making a point behind the slotted anchor. I like that. 5 3 hits back. And the 3 can probably just step up, but down can't be bad for building either. When we step up and we get hit loose on a high point again, then we're shooting at that checker and aiming at making an anchor. 4 2, I feel like I prefer the other split. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe it's too provocative, yeah. Maybe neither at all. 5 3 gets the. Uh, we can point on header, make the five point. And with our racing lead, maybe we should just go for the structural thing and not leave sixes from the bar. I don't know. Yeah. Chooses the point on head route instead. Five, six is going to return fire from the roof now. And now we have potentially a, a more even race. Five in and three hit back is pretty strong, though. Nodar with the better board, still two. And no anchor for Ralph. Twos is at least going to create some offense there. And where do we want the last two? Do we want to be up on the 21? Do we want to play 20 to 18? Maybe 2018 is nice distracting from making the five point. We've got the nice 24-23 double coverage. Uh, finds eight to six with it instead, though. Okay, yeah. Four one. I think this probably wants to hit twice. That'd be my expectation. Yeah, I like that play. Just seems like the moment. Lack of options. Don't want to let our opponent just make the twenty point. Play quiet. Uh, nice entry from Ralph, though. I think we got a fight for the five point once more. And, oh, yeah, switch to put another one on the roof to protect that. Yeah, I think that seems pretty good. And the 5-6 is going to enter. Okay. 4-6, no reprieve for Nodar. And this looks like a strong cube with a 5 back now for, for Ralph. Um, plenty of play with the double anchor, but, I mean, this is just exactly the kind of game where we have to get it in to try to make up a match lead. Easy take for Nodar. So maybe he could like adjust to waiting, knowing that his opponent just wants to take this every time anyway. I don't know. Six can just play behind and start a point, sure. And yeah, should be a pretty playable game for Nodar without too many gammons here. But uh, six two is just gonna make a bid for freedom, sure. Goes all the way. Five three. Doesn't look like we can do anything with our back checkers. So is the midpoint maybe going? I don't want to play this deep in this kind of positional like situation. So yeah, okay. That was the only other option really. Six one has to leave a shot somewhere. Where's the place to do it? Okay, he's gonna make the bar point. Yeah, it does. It blocks the 24, of course. We want to do that. Yeah. So leaves two shots to do it. 6 4 seems to miss all of them. But uh, at least it can run from the back somehow this time if it wants to. Well, the 4 isn't so good after 22 to 16. So actually, I don't know. Maybe we just like come 24 to 20 as well or something. But what is he? He's just going to cover from the midpoint. Okay. Let's take a look at that one. It seems like pretty disconnected from our five checkers back there. 6-5 can stack up the 8. Yeah, sure. I like that. 4-2. Oh, I, can't we make the... He's going to step up. We really don't want the 24 and 20. It's just a bad game. So I want to get rid of it and step up to the 22 or something like this, I think. 4-2. 4-2 Four is going to hit and continue. Okay. Things starting to come together for Ralph. 5s. I guess it could just hit on the five. If we, I mean, we would love to play two out and have this outfield contact, but then our last one's not so good. I don't know what to do with it, so I think I'm just hitting. Four, 
Four enters. Not many safe plays with the three. Yeah, we can just hop out to the bar point, of course. Okay. Yeah, this seems to reduce shots, gets like closer to freedom. No need to uh, introduce another blot. Looks to be a nice play. 6-2 doesn't do exactly what you're thinking of either, so it's just going to go for mobility like this. Okay. The 2 is not so pleasant. Do we have to lift 5-3? to three? Oh, we're going to volunteer an ace. Yeah, I guess with a double anchor, why not? Again, XG just wants to give up on this whole 24 and 20 game together. Uh, especially only down 16 pips in the race. We just clearly don't have timing for it. But Nodar happy to defer, and maybe he'll gain the timing with these blots around, and it'll become playable. And maybe he'll just run off it later if he needs to. 5-2 is going to enter and start another point, sure. Yeah, he really hates leaving blots around when he's about to be in some sort of tactical melee. doesn't like slotting all the points at the same time, I've noticed. So considering dillying a builder to avoid that here. 5-1 can just safety a checker. Simple plays for Ralph, I think. Oh, wow. Wants to go for distribution instead? Very interesting. Okay, okay. Nice find, Ralph. Three's going to hit. The one gets to clean up. Beautiful shot for Nodar. Five, three is in. I guess his opponent still has so much work to do that we should just stay flexible. Okay. Five, three probably just wants to play from the back 20 to 17 and keep things moving, but wow, okay, really. Yeah, I'm not sure. The seven to four I would just never even think about, so I can't really tell you why that's a nice play. <laughs> Hits and comes in. Okay. And on a fan, he's looking good. And Ralph going to get his choice of hits. Going to go for the high checker. Probably 8-7 to seven with it. Rather have that spare a little more front loaded. But then I guess we don't have as good as sixes. So it's a little different against that 24. I don't know. Three and one hits. And Nodar doesn't have any quit in him. 5-4. Uh, does the four want to get another blot involved here? I'm not sure about this. He is, though. Finds the right play, wins more gammons. Just afraid of having... Uh, why do I want a second checker back against this four-point board was my thought. But I guess uh, we really need to develop these points to come home against the 24 points. So now is a nice time to, to take some chances to make that happen. If that was the case last time, then aren't we just pointing on ahead here? Yeah. Looking to fade a three, and he does it, and Ralph's game is in really great shape now. Winning a ton of gammons in this position. The four covers, and then I guess the ace can just... Does it even want to link up? We want to give that up against the 24 sooner than later, so he's going to pause to think about it, but decides he has work to do to bring these checkers around. We'd like to have that in place until the blot on the 20 point and the midpoint are home. Uh, here, I think... Somehow I want to volunteer something from the mid shot, midpoint. Yeah, this looks good. Anything to try to get the checkers home while our opponent has two on the roof right now before that gets scarier and we're leaving shots and things like that. Directs. Uh, aces can bring one in if it wants. And then the other two, probably 16 and 12, just making sure we're not on double fives, I think is all that we really need to worry about. Okay, he's just going to play them all from the back instead, though. Yeah, that should be fine. Ace-deuce enters one. And now, now Ralph's got to be a little bit more careful about where he leaves his blots. I think probably he can leave no shots by playing seven and four. Uh, making the eight might be a nice way to consolidate and be closer to home, though, too. I think probably just the safe play must be kind of okay here. Oh, nine and four. Why this little mix of both? Very interesting. This was the first thing I saw and just decided that I didn't need to volunteer the shot, but yeah, totally fine option too. They're all very close. Ace in, deuce is not so good. Just gets the switch to a deeper point. Looking for fours to step up and gain mobility. Four, three, what does this do? I guess just plays to the deuce, right? Wow. I would not find this idea of volunteering now, but Ralph pauses to think about it. Four, three gets the switch. Okay. 
And now Nodar's got enough flexibility to make this game work. The six is forced here, so we're going to keep the 24-point the blocks, sure. Three's going to hit. Wow. Is he going to turn another one around? This is amazing. One fan, and he's doing pretty well. Six, four. Okay. Ralph's got some dice, too. Continues on out. Only ace, ace, and five ace hit. No such luck. Ralph looking for an ace of his own. Also no such luck. Yeah, I think we just bring this closer to home. What are we supposed to do? 15, 10, 6, 4. Interesting. Pretty clear the 6, I guess. Uh, 4 up is probably better than out. But both are nice. Get one more checker in the mix. But I, I'm just worried about I might not have all day to get up to that 20 point again. 6, 3. Guess he can also like run from the back in a lot of instances. What is the thought? We're gonna think about volunteering now instead of being stripped. But our sets work really well. Uh, maybe they don't work that well. Sixes are frozen, fives are somewhat frozen, but fours, threes, can all clear. That seems like the long-term thing to do. All right. Looking for some safe clearing roll. 4-2 is not it. Going to clear the six point first. All right. And plenty of shot vig here for, for Nodar. Oh, opens up the five so we can get that checker on the 24 going too. All the way to the nine and slots the six. Okay. And yeah, a ton of play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he got this right. One, two, three, four. There we go. <laughs> Legal. Ooh, aces. Okay, that's going to save a lot of problems. I think we want to pre-clear the 6-2. Are there any disasters here? I don't think so with that, like, 5-4, 6-4. Just take, uh, oh, yeah, they, they, they can only take one off or clear from the rear or something. There's no big double shot things, I don't think. So I think it's okay to take the spare out the four. So we're probably just going to play four to two. Yeah. Not sure there's really any play B there. Double fours. Two of the points are started. He's going to come from the front there. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right. Almost ready. Almost ready for that shot. And double threes. Not going to get it now. That's a huge roll for clearing the six point for Ralph. Much safer looking now. Looking to avoid some threes up. Three two is a good one. Six three five three four three are shot levers for now. Yeah, we're going to make the 11 points. Have sixes to cover the five next time. Looks good. 5-3, there it is. Leaves a blot. Let's see if Nodar can turn this one around again. Uh, Ralph with 6 off here, so it can definitely still win this game. 6-5 is just bringing 2 in. Yeah, they go to the perfect places, so I think so. Double aces. Okay, 9 checkers on the deuce point. Time to run with 1 for Nodar. And he'll have a few different rolls to wait to try to hit an ace here. An ace will leave a shot, and then he'll be shooting at it with it for an ace uh, from the roof. 5-2. Ralph's not going to leave it yet. Fives. Can this stay? He's just going to run off the gammon without even thinking about it, huh? Wow, he can still win. Doesn't he want to? Okay. He's got it. He can save the gammon so easily, though. Okay. Down to three left. And Nodar going to need to roll reasonably well to get off this. That is not a good roll. You're going to need a five or six up next time. Or sets. What is it? Like twos are better? And five threes enough. Saves the gammon. Okay. And Ralph on the board. Six away, 13 away. What 
we have to start this game? A 5-2. Okay. Um, I don't think he needs to do any, like, crazy down stuff yet. Maybe he can. Always somewhat optional. 6-3 doesn't tend to like to hit. Yeah, it just likes to run. This is a nice find by Nodar. You notice that second roll. Somehow I missed that one by a mile recently. It's uh, quite correct, too, versus hitting. 4-1 can come around. And the ace, less good. We usually don't want to be on the 23 like this, but hmm, I wonder why that's better than the 10 here. Interesting. 6-4 can hit in the outfield and point on 10. Maybe there's some duplication there. Could be some tactics. 2-6 makes the 23 point and slots the bar. Not a great start for Nodar so far. I don't know if this is enough to cube even at the score. It can't be too bad, but it doesn't look too gammonish. And we haven't made any board points, so it doesn't feel like the right mix, but he's right. It's right on that borderline there. It's more wins than I would have guessed. I didn't realize we were up all the way up to a 2-1 to one favorite here. So he's going to send this cube. Easy take for Nodar still. And see if we can make up a little bit more of that match lead. It's stuck seven points right now. Develops beautifully there. Making the five point. Uh, Nodar gets a 6-4 to come down and slot. Okay. 4-2. Not sure I would have found that checker play so comes play. That was a tricky one. Uh, what do we want to do here? Do we want to step up and try to escape? 22 to 20. We get attacked more, but we have the better board, so we're not too afraid of that. Yeah, why not leave room instead of getting more? Yeah, we can actually just hop out to the outfield directly. I like that play, too. Okay, it does a little painful on double twos. <laughs> Fortunately, you could really use one extra of them, but I think he'll be happy with the three-point board in the split. Three enters, and two can hit or clean up, or we can enter deep. So he looks like he's not thinking about hitting off the edge against the better board. He just wants to play the priming structure. Okay, I think that makes a lot of sense. And my first instinct was to look at that in a priming scenario. We just usually want to hit off the edge. But he's right to slow it down a little bit and not get into the attacking game plan against the better board. Nodar happy to keep the attack up. This gets to hit, and then... What does it want to do? I mean, it it would rather hit loose than switch, I think. So, yeah, he's going to go for that version. Uh, the 5-4 switch is interesting. It just looks like we don't want the 10 and 4 together. Um, so close between those two. Of course, we don't want to leave a blot and end up behind this strong board either. But we can, we can fade it. 2 in, and then the 6 is just going to hop out and keep the structure. Okay, I like that. Uh, 10 to 4 is getting really close there, too. 5-6 gets to hit twice. All right. Now they're trying to blitz to buy the time to escape. And back with four checkers back again. And he's had a lot of checkers back all game, but he's making it work. Ace in and deuce anchors at the edge. Okay, that's going to freeze a lot of Ralph's progress. Only 11 pips down. Double sixes could have been blown him off the board otherwise. I think this is just going to escape both the back checkers. One of them's coming all the way around. To the five, yeah, that looks very nice. I don't think we want to turn this into a blitz behind or anything like that, but I guess it's an option. It just looks kind of overrun when you still have these two che uh, checkers back. So, yeah, I like that play. Well ahead in the race. Six gets to hit and keep that last checker from finding full freedom. The two up to the edge. Maybe. I'm not sure what it gains really exactly. Uh, three, five can just hop out. Again, Ralph just looking for freedom. All his other checkers are placed where he wants them. So just trying to get that last one to join the army. Three in and the four is not so good now. Yeah, for lack of options, he's just going to hit loose on the ace. Uh, the tempo is kind of nice, too, to avoid the, the blitz and pointing on head. We don't want to leave the four. We don't want to give up our blocking structure. We don't want to slot in front of the anchor. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Five, five is going to fan. Okay, that's a very nice uh, result of the tempo hit. 4-2, I think it's worth covering. I think that's more important than keeping our blocking structure, which we can reestablish. But I am way wrong. 
Okay, I guess when our opponent enters with like a four, any like hitting number, and there's going to be a lot of them, maybe just as many as the direct ace. Um, then we've lost our priming structure, and he has a path out with very strong board. Uh, so we just have to keep this five prime in front to make sure that those four checkers can't work their way around and close out. Nice find, Ralph. Ace deuce. Looks like it's going to hit twice. And Nodar is still with the idea of blitzing, even if he crashes through these two checkers after closing him out. Uh, could still be enough to buy him time to escape those four checkers somehow. He's going to need a lot of time to do it. That's a lot of fives to escape the three on the 21. Ace six enters and pops out. Beautiful shot for Ralph. And Nodar's got to use the five to hop. And then what can the deuce do? Can hop into a new double shot. That doesn't seem to help much. So yeah, 24 to 22. Now we have a lot of chances of return shots if we're hit there and maybe establishing that if we're not. Sixes can't hit there. So it looks like we're just cleaning up somehow. Yeah, okay. A little bit fast for Ralph. And now he's under some pressure to uh, roll an ace there. Uh, ace is going to step up to be avoid being attacked. Okay. Reinforce that point too. So at some point, five stone pull us off the anchor. Five can cover and deuce can slot another point behind. Okay. And every roll that Ralph can find that ace is just like huge for Nodar here. I don't see a big difference with the ace here. Five three is going to clear a point. He's going to keep the okay. I like this. Makes the board point, keeps the sixes blocked. But now Nodar with more ways to escape and get into this. Four out, and I think two to come to the edge. Oh no, we can slot the back. Yeah, why not? It's only an a six. I think I like that because we uh, might help us attack off the edge and everything like that. Ten to eight looks very nice here. Going to find the five to three instead. Okay. Ace finally steps up. Four gets to play behind. And now Ralph just needing a six to pop out. And Nodar needs an ace to stop it. If he was at the eight, he would have been using this to hit loose off the edge. Would have been happy to do so. Uh, but instead, he's going to come cover the outfield. Okay. Uh, six, two, and six, three leave shots now. He's got some ways to close from the back. Ralph forced to just give up another blocking point. Two in, okay. Nodar with the 5-4. Does he need to hit off the edge? I think so. I think it's pretty desperate here, yeah. Though we do like how our opponent keeps cracking when they don't escape. But instead, we get him to enter at the edge, bury a checker to the 6, and things are looking great for Nodar. He wants to pause and think about the cube. I think sending a 4-cube at this kind of score is a bit suicidal. Um... But when it works, we're going to get to the match end pretty quickly. He's going to get a lot of recubes out of Ralph there. Look at this. We're like 86% to win. And he's actually wise to be thinking about this. This is really close to the point. Wow. This ends up being a really well-timed cube. And we'll have to see if Ralph can find the take even. I mean, if he has the idea that he's only 15% to win, it's not comfortable. But he knows being able to get in an 8 cube and all the overage there is worth quite a bit. This is very difficult. I mean, usually this is almost like too good looking, but we probably just cash it. Something like that. I have no idea what the take point is here. If we look at, uh, I'm going to check that out a little bit. It looks like Ralph has a, a dead cube take point of 21%, but with the recube vig can take all the way down to, to, uh, maybe 13%. But yeah, it just looks like a dead game to him. So he's just going to let it go, take a break. And, and Nodar finds a really, you know, theoretically right on that borderline, but also a very strong practical cube here, getting to pick up these uh, two points without having to play it out when his opponent actually has a very threatening take there. Uh, so really good stuff from these two. And that's going to leave us at four away, 13 away. Looks like the players are taking a short break there. So we'll be back with the conclusion here. It's been a pretty one-sided affair so far. 
we hop over to that match progression, uh, there's Nodar riding the roller coaster up. There was this one game where Ralph like fought really hard for his two points and got back in it a little bit. <laughs> but otherwise, it's just been pretty tough luck for him. And that's how you end up at four away, 13 away. If we look back at this, we can look at the match equity from there too. It's going to be, oh, you have to like scroll through the chart to get to it. It's such high numbers. I'm not used to having to go this far. Uh, right at 10% pretty much. So that that is a strong indicator that that if our match equity is that bad when we pass to get to here, that I guess uh, if if Ralph knows that actually, if he knows that his match equity right now at four away, 13 away is 10%, um, then taking the cube and immediately turning it, uh, no, it still doesn't get him enough gain because he's only 15% in the game. Okay, it's more complicated. I just had an idea there, but never mind about that. But yeah, we'll be back with uh, the rest of this match in just a moment here and going to put you on a short break. Uh, I just saw someone walk by. I don't think it was a player. But yeah, short break. We'll be right back. Thanks, everybody.
All right, players coming back to the board here, and looks like we're going to get started up again. As I mentioned, uh, Nodar Gagawa with a four away lead against uh, Ralph Jonas's three, 13 away. Uh, so a lot of ground to make up for Ralph. Uh, we talk him in my book about the uh, four away scores leading to like high gammon price or yeah, high gammon values and still like relatively aggressive cues. But this is not going to be the case with this big of a match trail. I think uh, Nodar are going to have to be pretty conservative with the cube here, in theory at least. But we haven't seen him play that way necessarily. So maybe he will be willing to send an aggressive gammonish cube kind of early to try to play for the match here still. See what we come up with. And of course, if he wins, you know, he's potentially one game away that way, so that can definitely work. Introduce some volatility into the game. Uh, surprised he doesn't want to split there. It feels like he's primed. He's more primed than his opponent. Needs to see the light. And this is actually going to encourage Ralph to think about the cube already. I guess maybe on the fly shots there could be a lot of turnaround, but it doesn't seem like enough. But wow, he's he's sharp. I would not have even thought that that we're really like in that big of an advantage here, but I guess we got the better structure, small racing lead. We have a little bit of everything, so we should be in those like high 50s. 3-5, maybe, I don't know what this wants to do. Typically, we don't want to give up the 8 to switch like this. Uh, it's okay here, though. But yeah, just running looks kind of reasonable against this priming structure, too. And now, Ralph, with even more fly shots, threatening to make a 4 prime. His opponent under timed feels like... Uh, like we've probably gotten there just having seen the results last time. I'm not sure this is one that I would be thinking about, though. This is really tricky. And again, the deficit. It's just uh, more important to get the cube in in time and not lose our market than it is to worry about the recubes. Of course, it's going to be near impossible for Nodar to send this back on four because it'll be coming directly back on eight. Uh, but I was saying that at a six-away cube, too, and he found a way. So, you know, we'll see here. Performing from the bar after being hit. 2-4 looks like it's just going to clean up a blot. Okay. Four three can link up with uh, 17. I think that's the best anchor we can ask for right about now. Um, but I guess we do have the better boards. So we could take the tempo away and hit loose on the deuce and go for this game plan as well. Looks a little weak on the follow-up with only nine in the zone. Um... Yeah, maybe at some different score, I'd think more about it too. I, I don't know. I think I just want something constructive and uh, to make that outfield point here. He's played the 17-point game too. I can't remember if it worked for him though or not. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe that's like one of the few games in this match that he lost. <laughs> With 28. Well, there's only one game he lost. So if the only one was the 17-point game, then yeah, we can't make the 17, right? That never works. Never works in the rollout of one. Really good match between these two, though. Seen some exciting stuff in like playing the volatility just right. All right, and so he wants to go for this more aggressive variety. Fits his style. Not too surprised to see it. And he gets a fan out of it. And here we are where, I mean, exactly what, what Nodar is hoping for, I'm sure, is that he can find a way to just win a gammon on this two cube and win the match there. Ace five is going to hit. Okay, that plan's off for now. Ralph's still performing. But on a fan, he's definitely threatening. Five three. Probably, yeah. Why do we want to give a direct six out? I guess we just got to clean it up. I don't think it's that urgent to play 22 to 17 for mobility, but I guess when we're missed, it follows up well. Wow, that's really interesting how close those are. Nice idea that he finds there. 3-2. Uh, I think we want the anchor, but we can extend the prime too, huh? And only, I don't know. Yeah, the follow-up's really difficult on the other side after we make the anchor and give away one of our spares there. But really, we're just planning on dumping checkers from the 13, I think, probably anyway. I don't know. My instinct is to anchor anyway. Yeah. 
They all run pretty close though. I'm still always impressed by that when they find like close play bees that like maybe weren't even exactly on my radar. Um, you know, just the awareness that there's really this other option and this other plan to go for. It looks like this is mostly a score based thing, being able to make the point here. Um, he wins three and a half percent more gammons, gives up six and a half percent more gammons. So there's like a three deficit there. Um, and he wins less games, but when you don't care about your opponent's gammons and you do care about yours a lot, then it can bring it at least closer into range. Very interesting. Interesting that 13 to 11 is an option with it too. Just to stay a little bit more pure instead of stacking up, worry about how we're going to play it forward against that 24 point. That seems to be his concern. And plenty of time on the clock to give this one a think through. Well, it looks like he's settled on the anchoring part of it anyway. But still not sure how he wants to play that too. If he needs to go for something bold right now, or if he can afford to play patient and just stack up 7-5. to five. Oh, they can't remember if it started on the bar or not. <laughs> All right. Two six. Yeah, is this just gonna Oh yeah, the two can link up and see the light here. Maybe it steps under the gun a little bit, but that seems fine to me. Four one. Ouch. We have to leave a shot. I guess we can just dump behind. That looks pretty ugly though, but with the race lead, maybe that's what's called for. Yeah, breaking the seven just a little bit better there instead. Not the game plan you had in mind, so easy to pass that one up. And then can Nodar afford to leave lots around with a slightly better board here? Probably, just for flexibility. 13-10, the little bit better one to challenge. Yeah, the anchor. At least when our opponent hits then they have to give something up. Double sixes can't escape the anchor. Going to cover the ace for sure. And then what else are we doing? Are we going to play another one to the ace? Are we going to play another two to the ace? Oh, we could play... In, if we don't cover the ace, we can play all four down from the mid. Yeah, that's probably the play there. So we don't want to bury checkers and then we don't have to that way. I like that. Big racing lead after the play, but a lot of work to do to get that 20 point away. And Nodar has points all over the place to contain it. So he wants to keep the link instead and bury some checkers to the ace. Doesn't want to give his opponent full freedom to prime in the outfield there. Worries too much about that job of bringing the 20 point home. 4 1 can just start two points. Seven, even less value now that we've got three checkers on the ace point. And a 3 2. Yep, I'm just going to quietly in 11 to 6. Can't make any more blocking structure. Just waiting for his opportunity to hit a shot. And could be coming up soon on a six. Four two, he looks ready, so he's probably gonna really not want to leave points or blots and board. Has been his style this whole time too. What can he do with two blots and board though, and weak structure? I feel like yeah, he should volunteer something in the outfield here. This one seems to get the most returns in the outfield as well. Makes another blocking point. I like this play a lot. Yeah.
We are down in the race. We're limiting the numbers that our opponent can use to run away to safety with this blocking point. Blocks double fours. If he runs one, it sets up to attack on that 5.2. So there's a lot that the two checkers on the nine are doing for us. Six five. Since now's the time to come off his anchor, has to leave a lot of shots on board to do it. He could run from the 13 and make the deuce, leave a double shot, still have the anchor, and have a better board. Feels like the time for that to me. Doesn't seem like our opponent's about to make a better board or anything like this. The distribution can't get much better than this. But uh, he's going to run 20 to 9 instead, go for it all, duplicate some aces, and 4 3. I think this is required to go for it. So after we hit, do we play the 13 down, I suppose? It's a lot, but there's two blots on board to go pick up two even when we're hit. So I, I think we should try to win. But look at this. He's looking at a quiet play and just waiting and relying on the 17-point contact. Okay, very interesting. So he wants to play a holding game instead. Four comes in, ace cleans up, and now we have the opportunity to blitz is kind of gone here. No loose hits anymore. 3-2. Looks like it's just going to throw another checker behind. Just patiently waiting on that contact with the, the midpoint. 5-1 gets to hop out. And now aces are easy enough to hit. Sevens can be okay too, but they'll leave some returns from the bar. I think he'll take that one. And even the way this has progressed, on a closeout, Nodar can still win some gammons here for sure. 5-1. There are 14 pips outside. So by my formula there, or the Rockwell formula or something, I think that's like 25% gammons when he gets the closeout. Maybe he wants to think about just recubing it too, huh? Interesting. 3-2. Uh, I think making the ace point is good. Keeping him fanning is just nice here. Yeah, there we go. Even though they're out of order, we should be just fine. Maybe there's some numbers where we want our opponent to enter and crack or something like that, but I think better to just keep him on the roof. And is he pausing to think about the cube too? Oh, wow. He wants to think about trying to claim this and see what Ralph wants to do with it. What is Ralph's take point here? I don't know exactly, but it's going to be low, probably under 10%. Um, let's look at it. Ralph, yeah, his live cube is about 9%. So it's going to be hard to get to anywhere we can claim. And you're giving up on the value of winning a gammon for the match. So I really wouldn't think you'd want to send something like this. Uh, yeah, so it's one where we can win a gammon if we don't. But if we send it, our opponent just has an easy take and send back. 5-3. Uh, just going to not leave shots from the bar. Okay. And 2-1 enters. Any pip outside is going to save a bunch of gammons, so that's a huge shot for him. Double sixes is going to leave one fly shot in the outfield somewhere. Uh, which one do we want to do? Okay, we're going to leave the 6-1 and 5-2 and potentially some escaping numbers as well. The 3-2 can get a crossover, and again, gammons just evaporating quite quickly as he plays checkers outside. This is going to go down to... Uh, oh, and he's going to recube this now. This might still be a take for, okay, we, okay we've gotten to 92.7. Wow. Oh, that is close to the borderline. This is, again, just incredibly timed, really given Ralph no good option here. Either he's got to pass and go to like some tiny, less than 5% match equity probably, or he's got to take it with his under 10% winning chances in this just trashed game resend it, and when he gets away with that, then he's still only at four-way, five-way, still a slight underdog. So really unpleasant spot, really nice and high-pressure cube that Nodar has found here twice now in these match scenarios. He's really handling this well and, and giving Ralph the toughest decisions he can. Ralph going to patiently let this one go again. Okay. And we're going to move on to two away, 13 away. Stays alive in the match anyway. All right. And we 
we are way down there in winning chances for Ralph now. What is this 6-4 going to do? Two away, 13 away is 3.75%. 6-4 is going to split. Okay, 6-2 gets to hit. Uh, oh, in the outfield. Yeah, of course. And so Nodar has some chances of winning the match on an undouble gammon. I imagine he'll go for it. But in volatile positions, that's going to entice Ralph to get a Cuban anyway. So pretty risky gambit here. Uh, still looking to play pretty, in theory anyway, like solid anchor type games, racing games. Just simple stuff, ideally. Get a point at a time if we're so lucky. Don't risk big swings back into the match. Uh, huge roll for Ralph. Makes the rack and the best anchor. 3-1 is a great shot for Nodar as well to follow up. And here comes the cube with the extra checker back, and the ace point still hasn't advanced at all. And Nodar happy to take this one. Uh, yeah, squarely in the center. Ralph's going to time him well, just like XG. So uh, you can assume you probably have a take against him. <laughs> Six out, three down. So the game progressing pretty naturally for Ralph. No timing for that ace point game for Nodar, so he's got to find a way off the 24 point here sooner than later. 5-3 just links up some blots, sure. 2-1. Actually, with that 4-1, he's supposed to slip, split because of that. Uh, should probably step up twice here. But yeah, I guess uh, I'm seeing a tendency to like not want to move those back checkers around for Nodar. Um, doesn't want to be blown off the board. Wants to keep the anchor for as long as possible. Will run at the last minute when he has to. And likes to go for those opportunities to take people off the board, too when presented. Uh, probably just two down from the mid. The eight point's still valuable. But we could just play two in from the ten, too. Maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know. No fly shots after clearing the ten, uh, but less ways to make the bar point. The bar point is of quite a bit of value here, of course, with the close race. Nice find by Ralph. And 6-5. I think this is going to want to escape a checker. A lot less gammons with one back than two. And not under risk of being blitzed on the ace point quite yet, most likely. 3-2 is just going to bring a checker in, I do believe. And still with a comfortable racing lead, even if Nodar escapes that last checker, he's doing okay. Maybe he actually wants to stay back on the 11 point in case he... Like, I mean, giving up the running with 6-4 is like pretty strong for Nodar, too. So maybe we're not giving up that much when we're hit anyway. And we can go for some better building potential. I think that's what he's going to think through with this something like an 8 to 6, 8 to 5 and put pressure on that back checker and try to close it out idea. And if he's going to win a gammon, he needs to close out soon. You know, every roll, Nodar gets to make a little more progress bringing the checkers on the midpoint and the eight point into the board so that if he is closed out, he doesn't lose gammons. And decides to go with this more aggressive, more gammonish play. Like it, got strong merit too. Aces, I think it's better to make the board here than uh, move freight towards home. That can also protect us from being blitzed. So a little bit of counterplay for Nodar still. 3-1. Well, the idea last time was not to play it so stiff, but against the four-point board, is getting a little bit worse. So maybe we could uh, clean up, but he's still going to stay pretty loose back here. Okay, 5-1 he needs to go for. That's a tough one to find. 4-4 four, four is going to bring one checker in and then can give complete freedom by playing down from the midpoint, but at least it saves a lot of gammons. Uh, maybe better to keep the contact for now. It's a little bit extra play, so probably into the 5 and then the ace and then the 8-4. to four. But no, he should just release. Okay. Wins a lot more to stay back there, but loses a lot more gammons. Okay. So the wrong trade-off. The contact isn't favoring him enough. That's very interesting. And he is slightly ahead in the race afterward, too. So I guess just breaking contact and trying to run with the six looks like a really nice plan for Nodar. Okay. I can kind of see it now. Took me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, goes for the, the maximum wins here. Understandable. 6-5 looks like it doesn't need to start hitting loose now. I guess 6's out are starting to get very scary, and there's a blotting board, so I think so. After we do that, 
The only thing that doesn't leave another shot is the six in. Decides that's the six for sure. Then does he want to hit loose or go in 10 to 5 for distribution? All sixes are just so strong after we don't hit. Yeah, I think he's going to find this one. And we'll see if he can freeze Nodar's progress so he can get a closeout and find four points to get back in this game. Big jump to make his way to two-way, nine-way for sure it would be. There he has closer to 10% where he's under 4% right now. All right. Could be a lot of the match riding on whether there's an ace here or not. And a 3-5 as a fan. 5-1 can't cover, though, so it's going to repeat. I think 10-5 uh, to five and 4-3 to three really flattens out nicely for, for making board points next time. One more shot at that ace. No such luck. But the twos is something. Gets to uh, move checkers around. What is he? Does he want to break the midpoint now, contact? And avoid leaving more shots? No, he wants to keep that. That block, I think that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Double twos. This can cover and hit loose, or it can make, no, probably we just make the two point. That's right. Two point and five prime in front. I guess he has to stop and think about these safe plays. I didn't really think about that at all. That maybe he can just lift to the, you know, play two in the front and play 18 to 16 and try to break contact and just win the race now. But, I mean, at the score, it's kind of easy to jump to gammonish conclusions as well. And the race isn't that good. Nodar's got pretty good chances if he doesn't hit. And so he sees he wants to hit on the deuce, and then does he want to cover the ace or make the pure structure? He could cover the ace and move 18 to 16 twice. I see. I didn't think about that option. A little bit of both, both ideas. Pretty close second. Nodar looking for a deuce from the roof. And 6-5, no good. All right. Lots of gammons in the future for, for Ralph here. Closes out. That's a good start. And again, with the 21 outside, it should be... Oh, I see. We did a six around in three covers. Okay. And then he's got a five what? Couldn't see it. 5-2. All right, 3-3. Three, three. Everything in, perfect distribution. And yeah, so we can take a look at that, but it should be, it's going to grow from 25% kind of, yeah, right around there. Uh, decides to make a peeling play to try to win more gammons. That makes a lot of sense when the gammon race is in that 20 to 25 to 75 range. He's going to have to be aggressive to go for it. So I like these peeling decisions. Going to have a big effect there. 5-6 is huge for saving the gammon. Enters, threatens to hit on a 6-1 or a 5-1, and also gets to move a lot of outfield pips there. And so Ralph's going to be able to hang on to the win here, but unlikely to get a gammon at this point. Sixes, is that enough to bring the threat on? One more set, maybe. Maybe not. This looks like a save every time for Nodar. So he's going to resign a single game. And on we go to 2 away, 11 away. A small step in the right direction for Ralph. You can barely see it on the match progression <laughs> graph there. It's funny. <laughs> Do I have this on this window? Yeah, look at that. He's come down a little bit. Down into the under, like, over 95 or over 5% range. It's something. Long road ahead of him. 6-1 is going to make the bar point. 4-1 gets to uh, split. Yep. 2 up is an interesting play there. I don't know if I knew that one. And Ralph is already happy to double it at 11 away, 2 away. Interesting. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like quite enough threat there. I don't think, I guess at four-way, two-way, that would be enough, but uh, not quite when the gammons aren't that perfect value here. Double twos, not too far off, though. Hits, hits again, and makes the point, and then probably steps up to see the light. Wants another checker involved in the closeout. Okay, and he's got that right, too. Wow. And double aces. Two in, and I think we're making the four prime, even though it leaves the illegal third checker on the 24. Structure, too good. Six, five. We're hoping to make the five point there, but we'll take the three, I guess, with this roll. Two, five. Maybe we want to play two down and cover the outfield. We don't leave any shots out there. And the checker on the six isn't really doing a lot of building now since we don't want to give up the eight or seven to make a point with it. I like this play. Ace five. The ace can step up to see the light and the five probably down for a builder. Threatening to make the five point. Five, three. What does this one do? I guess it just hits off the edge from the 11, sure. Sure, don't want our opponent to be threatening to escape. And Nodar is going to send that checker back, so a fourth back for Ralph now. The five, not so good, just going to clean it up. Okay. Five, two enters in a good spot. Then he can smooth out eight to six, I think is what he wants to do here, but wants to think about... We could also enter on the 23. What would his 5P then? I don't know. But maybe he just wants to pop out to the bar and not let his opponent potentially point on head, distract with aces. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I would find that one, but that seems to be the idea there. So distraction play in the sixes don't want to hit that much from the midpoint anyway since it would break it and disconnect from those two checkers back. It seems so natural to me to... Uh, Take the checker in. We love to have a spare on the six and be able to point from there. Now we have, you know, the five three would have been an option to point on ahead instead of having to just hit loose when we go for that distribution. So understandable play for me from Ralph. Six five escapes. And I guess it just has to keep coming around for like what? Well, maybe we'd rather be a hit here if we had the option to force our opponent to break the midpoint. Duplicates fours. But is it worth burying a checker 8-3? to three? I wouldn't think so. It's quite a bit to give up. Spend any pips in the front position here. Nodar does not have a lot of timing to escape these two checkers, so sometimes being hit can buy that for him. 6 is going to hit. Ace is going to get the checker off the 23 or 24. Finally. Finally a legal position. 4 in high and 2 gets to hit. Okay, pretty good response from Nodar. Lots of pressure on Ralph in this game. 6-5 returns fire from the bar. Okay, that's a great shot. More like that from Ralph to extend this match is what we need. Three in and two hits again. Both of them rolling like undefeated finalists, really. 2-4 is going to enter, and I don't think he has time to play this game, so he should probably split, make a bid for the 20 now. His play B is just to hit loose, 8-4, to four, but I really hate having to give up our structure to do that. So I think I'm just splitting here. Didn't even consider the 13-9, to nine because if we're going to stay on the ace-deuce, we need the timing bank of the midpoint, um, and we're giving that up here. Sixes and fives to break that, and we're just going to crash so often in a game like this then. That looks a little hopeless. So just a bit of an overplay to... Uh, to go for the attack instead. We'll see if we can figure that out. Maybe he just needs a pip count to realize that the race doesn't support timing for a 1-2 back game at all, so he should just leave it. And he's currently blocking in three checkers, right? We don't want to give up the structure that's doing that, so let's just give up the anchor in the back. Visually, there's just no room to, to sit on the 24 and 23 here too, right? Like there isn't room in the front structure to play at all after we make that play. So what are we going to do next roll is the question. 6-3 is a beautiful shot from Nodar. Going to punish that split point on head. And Ralph in a lot of trouble in this game. Nick needs sixes and fives out. Nodar does. 
Uh, maybe some sort of switch to the ace is worth something here just to buy time to escape. Yeah, and then we can play 8 to 5 and try to remake the 4 that way. I think I like that play. Uh, what does XG think about that one? I'm curious. That looks good to me. We wanted to play 8 to 5. Okay, just keep the structure. Yeah, fine. So probably 6 out from the back. And then the... Oh, he has to come from the front so we can keep going. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Gets another fan. And 3-1 still can't close, but it can clean up all blots. That's a pretty nice roll. Gets up to the edge, too. 1-5. I'm not sure what Ralph really needs to do. He's not entering right now, I guess, kind of helps him. Maybe he'd be ready to hit fly shots and things like that, but he's behind good structure and waiting to crack is kind of fine, too. And stays on the 3. Why would he do this? Uh, to stay linked, I guess. That's probably the idea. 3-2 is going to come around the bend. Okay. Ralph in with one, threatening fly shots. 4-4, four, four. does that get anywhere? Oh, it gets the point on the four point. Okay, that's some nice counterplay. And he's threatening a direct six to hit if his opponent fans. Let's note our god here. 1-4. Oh, this... Does it have to just clean up or does it have to go for the hit? I feel like it probably has to go for it. He's just in such bad shape when he does not anyway. The score hates it. He definitely wins more, wins a ton more gammons, wins even more gammons than his opponent does. But he holds a two cube, so his gammons aren't worth anything, and they're worth a lot for his opponent. So he needs to, I mean, it's not a big difference here, but at the score, slightly better to play in 10 to 6. But he finds this. Okay, this is a really great score adjustment from him. Might just be his style, too. I think I've seen him, like, prefer to play quiet than, like, volatile for everything in a lot of spots. But under a lot of pressure to escape this prime now. One six two five two six. Four four is not the role he was looking for. That is gonna be forced to clear four checkers to the ace point. Whole bunch of structure dead behind those anchors now. Five six. Not enough room to just sit on the position, so probably yeah, I like this just two out from the twenty one and keep working on containing the outfield. Priority isn't the back game. It's uh, making sure that single checker that we already have doesn't escape. 5-3. Doesn't have to leave a shot. Could take the spares off the 6, but now's the time. Okay. Slot a good point that we can make to 3-2. Three, I think Ralph wants to hit it to win some more gammons. And the deuce is just going to continue on out. Okay. Maybe slotting the back of the prime made a lot of sense there too. Ace 5 enters and buries a checker. And what does sixes do? Oh, cool. It links up and makes a board point on the edge. That's beautiful. It comes in to threaten any sort of ace six, uh, split idea. Doesn't see the 6-1 all that well. But we're attacking behind anyway, so. Yeah, so I think like 16 to 14 looks very nice just in case he hops out. And then the other two, who cares? 2-6. Nodar not leaving more checkers quite yet. There we go. Ralph's got great chances to get to 9 away, 2 away. That's almost locked up. Maybe some gammons here, too. If he's patient with this position, he's probably hoping to eventually trap Nodar off his ace point, close him out, and win almost 50% gammons that way. Uh, making the board point seems great, though. Why, why do we not want to deploy these spares this way? Maybe he's still hoping to let his opponent roll an ace 6 right now? That's so interesting. I would never think of not making that point. But yeah, he's already got the trap on mind. Okay, okay. Does it win more gammons? No. We just want our closed board first. 6-4 is forced to hit. Oh, that's beautiful. We'd rather have the board for this sequence. 4-3 misses. Three's going to clean up that blot. Okay, okay. Attacking on the deuce, should something go? Ace two, I think, yeah, just cleans up without hitting. And Nodar with the speed board ready. And Ralph in the spot where he needs to work on that trap play to win a gammon. I think we can just play from the 21 if we want. Yeah, I mean, this is fine to get hit on an ace six, I guess. Then we get to shoot out that extra blot back. Double twos, finally going to close out. 
I think he wants to, but he's like passed it up at least once. What else would there be now? Eight to two, seven to five is actually better now. Wow, what is going on with this play? And I feel like Ralph's going to find it, having looked at stuff like this already. And just making the two is like way down there. That's wild. All right. So what is the idea here? We really, I mean, our opponent doesn't have to hit us with aces that often. The ace six is the only one that we're trying to create, I guess. And so we're going to keep trying to do that with great builder distribution. Um, yeah, that's a fun trap play. And then the other one's still primed. I've never executed the trap that way. This is uh, interesting to me. I like it. And okay, he's getting dinged for it now. What is, is that actually a mistake though? I'd like to look closer at that. Five, six. So yeah, he wants to keep going for it, but the trap gets pretty risky when our opponent like doesn't get returns. Yeah. Uh, gonna have to leave a six to hit on the way out. Yeah, this has gotten awkward here. What about these last plays? Yeah. Three to two, what is this? Okay, so he wants to create twos because his aces can clean up. Ah. He misses a tactical opportunity a couple of times that actually forces no opponent to play a number. Okay. So 6-5 is just going to cover. 6-3. Okay, Nodar's got some chances here. Uh, just about everything hits. And the ace up looks pretty good, I guess. 5-4 is going to enter somewhere and hit loose on the ace. Probably won't want to use like a deeper checker to do it. Yeah, so I'd rather keep my spare on the 6 afterward than the 5. Not certain, though. Five and four hits. Ace five. Okay, going to send another one back. Still fighting. If he can just get one checker home to safety, that's a huge improvement for Nodar. Three, one. Oh, that's a miss. Unless, oh, it can go for the banana split, of course. With this weak board, he's just got to break the two. So his aces do find a hit as well. Yeah. Two, four. Still making progress. Wow. This would be a wild one to ultimately lose as uh, as Ralph here. Five in, four has to go for a hit again. And now it's starting to get like those ace or two with a four with it to clean up those blots. is looking pretty nice for Nodar. Uh, ace six, okay. It's just going to enter and hop out. Only aces are hitting that back checker, but he's got twos and sixes and ones and threes and everything in board there too. I think maybe a double five or a fan would be the only missing numbers. Maybe double fours. Twos is going to hit. It can hit both checkers and cover. Okay. Yeah, it looks very strong. And Ralph back on that path to close out. The one gets to hit. Six is going to get in range of cover in the back. Double sixes close out now. And ace four enters one. Making the 24 point would be a big, huge improvement here again. And uh, yeah, Ralph without the material to really prevent that quite yet. Haven't had a bunch of checkers sent back. Oh, he manages it. Ace in again. And so this time there's not going to be as much trap idea because there's a third checker back. Um, so he saved a ton of gammons with this. If he opens up the six, Ralph, then uh, the Nodar is just running one of the checkers around instead of having to leave his anchor. So what are the gammons? They're still pretty high with three back there and no board. A six. Oh, what a shot. Okay, does he want to like roll another six and link up with that, or does he just want to stay back now and save gammons? I don't really know. That's tricky. They're still at 42%. Makes the 15, okay. Five, one, forced. Sixes and twos to hit and get back to the same old game. Uh, does any eights get there? Nope. But it does make the six prime and keep good contact with that extra checker trying to send a third back. Two one can't get to safety, has to step into a double shot. Ralph looking for a six or a three. Three two is going to be good. After a minor sweat, the trap seems to be working out.
All right. Nodar has established the bridge from ace point to ace point. Jokingly talk about variants where if you do that, you can just uh, link up and come across the board there. Yeah, it's basically fanning for Nodar has no play, so it doesn't need to roll. No numbers play whatsoever. Completely restricted in movement. Six five is going to play one spare deep. Four one gets to get into bear off. Is this perfect distribution too? Spare on every point. Looks pretty nice. Looks very safe. Five two can't get anywhere. Nodar looking for a six quickly. Six four going to take two off. Ralph just trying to bear off before that happens. Okay, that's going to save a lot of gamins. That's some upside for Nodar. 6-5 is going to leave a shot. I guess hitting it can help us save a gammon, but there aren't almost any wins here. Yeah, 5-4 is going to go for it, of course. Probably just continue there. 6-4 for Ralph. So I guess 5% of the time. Nodar can win here. It's a long shot, but it can... Okay, sixes are a big step in the right direction. Don't count them out. Yeah, I think we're just leaving all the fly shots in the outfield. Why would we leave a direct? Needs to dodge a 9, a 10, or a 12. And 3-1. Okay. I'm not... Maybe he wants to creep closer here so that his, if his opponent, like, makes a point, he gets direct shots on everything. There are some really good numbers that just like establish the six point or something like this or the, uh, you know. Um, so usually we'd want to stay back for maximum contact, but tactically it just kind of looked like this to me. Ralph will figure this out. I think he's got the calculation to think through the sequences, how everything's going to play. It seems like he must be a pretty tactical player the way he's very deliberate about a lot of these plays knows when to stop and kind of look through the roles that's the sense i get been very sharp stuff from him all weekend i think we got to watch two of his matches yesterday already and i think he played uh just under a three in one of them and a two in the other and so he's having something of an off match playing just over a three here uh yeah i mean really impressive play from him that's across some um, like 43 match points here, but so he's going to go for the deeper contact. Okay. Tough decision there. So maybe we get some more shots after our opponent rolls his 4-3 of, you know, more 8s than 9s kind of thing. Oh, the 8 would have hit too. So what should it do? Should it just run and try to win the race? Or crash the board and still stay for contact? That's a confusing one. Wow, I, I don't know. It needs to stay for contact and still win 71% of the time when he does. But he still wins 70% on the race, so he can go for either. Okay. Really, like, no way to make a mistake here. <laughs> Very interesting. And I'm surprised. I mean, I have no idea how to calculate who's favorite and by how much here. I'd have to come up with some sort of EPC formula to decide that my opponent's still some number of rolls away and what my position tends to be. But Nodar, you know, after being on the ropes to lose a gammon, somehow has gotten to a position with real winning chances for the match here. This is quite the sweat for Ralph. No misses either. Takes two checkers off. That's a great shot. Five in, four off. Okay. Um, Ralph rolling enough pips there to stay in the lead. And he has like one free miss basically here too. So he's still on six rolls to get off for Nodar as long as he can dodge the 2-1 next time. And this EPC is getting down to less than six rolls for Ralph, I think. Yeah, five roll position for Ralph. So he's only one roll behind. Nodar, just like one set to catch it back up. That appears to be all it would take. Just a rolls versus rolls position. Oh, okay. Ralph trying to slam the door on that idea. And Nodar going to need two sets to win this one out now. And not if Ralph throws one first. And off we go to 9 away, 2 away. All the way up to 10%. 
Ralph's slow uphill battle continues. Oh, are we going to take a short break here too? Cool. Let's hop over and look at the match progression then. It's fun. I mean, like just Ralph just stuck on the ropes here, as you can see. No, nope, not that one. I want this one. This one. I got it. Look at that. So he's just like, I mean, like Nodar's equity here, of course, like keeps like spiking up to, I mean, threatening to win a gammon and get way back into this match. Then in the high 90s, maybe even like win the match out. Some good chances there. Loving out back at that 10%. But yeah, uh, Nodar just skyrocketing into that lead early. And, and, and Ralph figuring, having a hard time figuring out any way to get back into this match. Got a long way to go. 10% match equity at 9 away, 2 away. But he keeps staying alive. Won't let him catch, like, gain that last little bit to cross over the line, over the finish line. Uh, so while the players take a short break, I'm going to send you to break as well, and we'll be back hopefully with the conclusion of this one.
All right. Your players coming back to the board there. Nodar Gagua on the right. Ralph Jonas on the left. We're going to get started off again at two away, nine away lead for Nodar Gagua. Just running over this match so far. Uh, Ralph doing everything he can in the last couple of games to claw his way back into it. But still just a long road ahead of him to get back into this match. 4-1 to open. He's been very aggressive with the two-way cubes as well. So we can expect uh, to see, you know, if he's missed here, I'm expecting it to come in. 4-4 four, four is no such thing. Uh, Going to hit twice and probably make the four point with it, or it can just link up and play simple at this kind of score, I suppose, maybe two. But 13-9 is an option. Okay. Uh, but, of course, I'm not surprised to see Nodar thinking of the win again for the match idea. 3-2, can't continue the blitz, so just going to reestablish the 8. Okay. And 3-2 makes a nice anchor in the 22 here, I think. Double threes. We would have loved to be pointing on the 3-point there. I think we still want to make the 5. And then we could just bring a checker around to the 10 or try to escape something like this. Stack up on the midpoint. I think I'd probably just play it around. But I think I do want to make the five point here. Just feels like it could be hard to settle in. Oh, he's just going to bring everything down here too. Okay. So he's playing like an anchor game trying to get into the race here. That makes plenty of sense. 6-1 makes a nice blocking point to make sure the last checker can't get to freedom. It's the wrong checkers to make the five twos. Maybe Nodar wants to wait and try to unstack the six onto that point. Uh, going to make that stack taller, though, while trying to escape. Needs to go for the loose hit just to unstack there with the better board. That's a difficult one to find when you feel like you just want a nice racing game plan. Six one. I What can we do? I guess we could play down from the mid, but I just want freedom here. So I'm looking 23 to 16 jumps out at me pretty quickly here. Interesting. Why would we want to play down for another attacker? Oh, we can make the double anchor game this far down. Of course, of course. So I guess if we're not going to make a double anchor, yeah, it's still better to slot here. Okay, so I'm way off on there going for mobility in a play like this. When we're this far down in the race, we're not really challenged with mobility. Of course, wrong theme. So yeah, Ralph, I think, is going to have to get a grasp on the race to decide if it makes sense to be playing a double anchor game or not. Decides that he doesn't have the timing or requirements to do it yet. And so, yeah, this time Nodar wants to unstack and prevent second anchors. Okay. Oh, he could have just hit both of them. Very interesting. Yeah, that's a nice play too. I mean, preventing the offensive five points seems so strong. Uh, what does this do? I guess maybe, I mean, we can introduce another blot to prevent the anchor on the five. But maybe it's better to just play with one here and like, Six to four, whatever this is, sure. Eleven down. That's tricky. Breaking the thirteen just seems like overkill. Everything else about it was good. Twos gets the point on head and buys some time to try to pick up extra blots. And I wonder on some poor entries if this would be good enough for Nodar to double. I don't think so. Or for for Ralph. Ralph has gotta like the volatility of this position, but it's still is he really winning this? Yeah, this seems way Nodar's the one winning more gammon. So he's happy to cancel those. I like that idea at least, but not really much market loss here, and he can just save the gammon. Six four gets to make the bar point, and Nodar is going to be very happy with how his position shaped up. I think still work to get by here, but I mean, ninety eighty eight pips after the roll is not going to be enough to maintain all these anchors. So something's got to go for Ralph eventually. I think it's a fine time for the midpoint to go here too. Usually want to keep that as a timing bank, but Nodar is nearly home. So if we advance to the nine, we make double contact, uh, a point with two or contact with two anchors. So maybe just clearing it's better. Yeah, there's a nice blocking point there, but clearing one of them. Okay, both fine. Five four can't hit anything. I think uh, covering the four looks pretty strong. I'm starting the next point too. Sure, doesn't mind being hit at all against the two point board with three anchors. All these fun things. Five one is going to just try to get home and smooth out. No need to hit. Just helps his opponent's timing at this point. 5-3 gets to hit from the front and keeps the 2-3 game while he's doing it. So no risk even. He can go forward or he can continue with the back game idea. 2-4 is forced. Nodar is still just looking for a way to slime home for the match. 
And Ralph under pressure to, to keep that checker contained or shake another one loose. Double aces. Okay, that's pretty good. Makes the five prime. And I think shifts seven to five. And now we don't really mind being hit on that with that blot on the ace at all. We've got good priming structure. Three, four enters. Maybe Ralph didn't want to come in so fast. I don't know. Probably wants to put a checker on the sixes out for timing. Or does he just want to keep that playing around? I'm not really sure. It doesn't always represent timing when it's behind a five prime. But it looks like Nodar's five prime is going to go away pretty quickly. So I think 12 to eight seems okay. Still close to a 50-50 game here, too. Finds the best of it, as he tends to do. What does Nodar got? A 6 to escape. All right. We're going to see if it works in uh, the timing favor for Ralph or not. He's going to need a six out to keep that going. Ace three, does he want to send one back? I don't think so. I think he risks just messing up his own timing at this point. He needs to just play the back game. So yeah, just going to pass on the hit, play around, wait for Nodar to come to him. Double fours is going to improve the timing quite a bit. Make sure that he doesn't get stuck back there, brings two in. And so fives and sixes out for Ralph should be pretty easy to find here eventually. 6-2 is all the timing he needs, and now he's got a great 2-3 game. And Nodar has great dice for clearing, though. And the uh, 6-4 practically forced with this. So if he can get rid of that, I mean, he's in the double pass territory for normal scores. Of course, nothing happening with, happening with the cube at this score. 6, I think, out for mobility is fine, but I guess we could... Doesn't really, I guess maybe 14 to 8 feels kind of nice in 12 to 10, but I'd rather just get the checkers moving. Yeah. Uh, makes the 14, sure. Let's see if he can find 3 up is not what he's looking for. Looking for ways to clear the 6. These are both going to come off the the 4 point, I do believe. If he takes a checker off, then the 3 is forced. Well, the 3 is forced either way. <laughs> 5 gets to slot the back. Okay, 2 comes around. Ralph mostly ready for shots. 5-2 can clear. That's a huge shot for Nodar. Okay, now a big favorite to win this matchup, I think. What are the winning chances here? Okay, so it's still like more like 2-1. to one. And wow, Ralph eventually or immediately going to give deuces, deuces for, uh, for Nodar to play. I'm surprised that that was so urgent. Usually you want to wait for less checkers there. And he's going to get pointed on as a result too. So the contact reducing quickly down to a 23-point game, which is not going to have a lot of wins here. Not looking good for Ralph at all. 4-3 looks like they're both going to come off the 4-point. And yeah, almost up to 80% here. I'm not sure I realized Ralph had a full, almost like better than 20% in this position. That's interesting to me. Okay, tries to clear from the rear and keep things odd instead to... Uh, Avoid leaving long-term shots. Three is going to cover from the back for sure. And then the two, whatever you like. Can't be too important. Five, four, two off. Things still progressing safely for Nodar. This is just going to, okay, yeah, get a checker moving from the back and, and slot the back. Six, two, clears safely. Wow, okay. One big step closer to home here. Things are looking grim. 2-1. Just going to clear from the rear. Okay, yep. All the way up to 85%. Ralph just hoping for his 15% chances to win this game, survive, and get to 7 away, 2 away, where he's still under 20% to win the match. <laughs> So not a good spot for him, but scraping by for everything that he's got left. 15% of 15%. That's low. There'd be a story, though. Okay, here's the shot. Likely to be the last one. Ralph needs an ace here. And he misses it. He's going to need double aces from his opponent now to get another shot. Still winnable, though, with only seven checkers off there. If he would have gotten it. And threes is going to do it. 
And there you are. You're going to have your first finalist determined. That's going to be Nodar Gagawa advancing to the grand finals of this match to be played tomorrow uh, in the afternoon in Greece time, early morning over here. And Ralph Jonas getting kicked out, getting kicked over to the, the quarterfinals of the second chance bracket. So he has an opportunity to continue to play through, uh, you know, three more matches to get back to the finals that way. But his path just got longer there, unfortunate for him. Uh, congratulations to Nodar Gagawa. Gagawa. He's going to take away some prize for being the undefeated finalist as well. So really good result for him and exciting stuff. So yeah, that's going to conclude our undefeated bracket action for the tournament. Everything less now is more second chance action to decide who the other finalist is going to be. We'll go through that today and then we'll have your grand finals tomorrow. So we're going to bring down the stream and take a short break. I'll find out when I'm back with the second chance semifinals scheduled for either five or six Greece time, which I think right now it is 340. So we got an hour or two till that next matchup. Just watch on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to this uh, Loot Rocky YouTube channel for information when when things are coming up like that. And, and we'll get you good there. And you can check their Facebook page as well. But yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back soon with more backgammon action. Congratulations to Nodar Gagawa, your undefeated finalist. Bye, everybody.